All right. We're in Psalms chapter 14, but D-Rail has uh, some cross-references for chapter 13. Go ahead, Brother D-Rail. I have cross-references for chapter 13, verse 5, pretty much. Uh, this one comes out of Jude, uh, chapter 1, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the compassion of our Master, Yahusha, Messiah, unto everlasting life. Excellent. Excellent. Jude is a great book. Yahuda, right? That's the name of the book, really? Yahuda? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so funny how they hide all this stuff from us, you know? It's messed mm -hmm. up. Uh oh. Lying tongues. Not really, not really a rabbit trail, but um, according to theologians, they believe that Jude. And James were Yahusha's two half brothers, and their real names are Jacob and Yehuda. Just something to think about: two houses, the two names of the houses being his brothers. Yaakov. That's great, Doug. Yeah, that's actually really good because our goal, what our goal doing this study together as a group, was to try to catch any two house references, any two house. That's great, though. Thank you. I gave you goosebumps. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that was that was that was that was good. Wow. I'm look in his rabbit holes. All right, chapter fourteen. Who would like to read that hasn't read yet? Don't be shy. Jump on in, Kristen. All right. I could offer Dennis. What's that? I could offer you to read. No. Um, well, hold on. I I can't. It quit again, or at least mine did. Shoshana, did you have something else you wanted to say? Yeah, we have a reader. Dennis wants read. to read. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, chapter 13. 14, I think. 14. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, put in my throat. The fool has said in his heart, there is no Yahuwah. They have done corruptly. They have done an abominable deed. There is no one who does good, or told. You will look down from the Shemaim on the sons of mankind to see if there is a wise one seeking Yahuwah. They have all turned aside. They have all together become filthy. No one is doing good, not even one. Of all the workers of wickedness, no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread. They do not call on Yahuwah. There, are, there they are in great fear. For Yahuwah is with the generation of the righteous. You would put to shame the counsel of the poor. But Yahuwah is his refuge. Oh, that the deliverance of Yisrael would be given out of Zion. When Yahuwah turns back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice, let Yisrael be glad. Our last part of prophecy. <clears throat> yeah, it makes me think of there's n there's none good, is there? <laughs> well, the interesting thing is too, and this is in scripture. It's, uh, although we're by no means perfect, but we look like we're just perfect people in the eyes of the world because <laughs> they're so wicked. And yet he calls our righteousness. Filthy rags. That's right. Hey, Dennis, can you get closer to the phone? Mm, is this better? Yeah, that's a little better. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Could you hear him read? Yeah. yeah, we heard him read. It was low, but I, I, was, I was late in telling him to get closer. That's my fault. Uh, but, yeah, that was a great read. 
good chapter. I like how Doug uh, got the two reference, uh, a little two reference uh, tip there. And then uh, this chapter ends in with verse seven. Oh, that the salvation of Yisrael would come out of Zion. Yeah. Yahuwah restores the fortunes of his people or the captivity of his people. Then Jacob shall rejoice and Yisrael shall be glad. So mm-hmm. it's great, you know. I don't know how... I. I don't know how I missed this, you know, as a Christian reading Psalms and seeing everything that has to do with Yisrael. Like, I don't, I don't believe I ever identified myself as being spiritual Israel. I was a Gentile. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't the right time. Just reading this, like, Oh, the salvation will come to Israel. Hallelujah. Okay. Next chapter. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Hallelujah. That's a great, great chapter. Um, The fool has said in his heart, there is no Elohim. There is no creator. There is no Yahuwah. And that's the scripture saying it. So we're not calling them fools. Yahuwah is. It's not our fault. Uh, They are corrupt. Yeah, atheists have their, their holiday too. You know what day that is? NFL Super Bowl? Yeah, no, it's April 1st. Ah. April 1st. <laughs> nice, I like it. <laughs> April Fool's Day. That's it. Happy Atheist Day, guys. That's yeah. great. I'm going to go around and say Happy Atheist Day. Yeah. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, anybody got anything else they want to say from this chapter? Just real quick, um, verse 4 really spoke to me in the context of what this chapter is about. It says, those who do evil never learn. They eat up my people like bread and wouldn't think of praying to Yahuwah. So in context, this is talking about people that are non-believers attacking Yahuwah's own people. So it's kind of funny what atheists do today. Like they, they talk about tolerance, but yet they're attacking us, yet they're trying to stomp us when we're down. So I, I just wanted to uh, bring that with verse 4. I wanted to bring up a cross-reference for uh, 14, verse 1. It's Isaiah uh, 1, 4. A last sinning nation, a people loaded with crookedness, a seed of evil doers, sons acting corruptly. They have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the set-apart one of Yisrael. They went backward. This is also a passage uh, that Shaul quotes from in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, where it says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, no, not one. In Christianity, I'm taught this is referring to every single person. But according to Psalms, it's talking about the fool who says in his heart there is no Elohim. And there are righteous people and there are wicked people. And that's the truth. So there is no one who does good who is wicked (laughs) in the realm of the wicked, you know, that group of people. And I get what they're trying to get to, that we have all fallen short of the glory. We've all, you know, we've all sinned. But if we're being honest with context, like where is he quoting that line from? It's coming from something that has context to it. Yeah. Anyone else? Go to chapter 15. Kristen, would you like to read? Psalms 15, verse 1. Yahuwah, who does sojourn in your tent? Who does dwell in your set-apart mountain? He who walks blamelessly and does righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He has not slandered with his tongue. He has not done evil to his neighbor, nor lifted up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a reprobate one is despised, but he esteems those who fear Yahuwah. He who swears to his own 
hurt <clears throat> excuse me, and does not change. He has not put out his silver at interest and has not taken a bribe against the innocent. He who does these is never moved. Verse 2. Uh, my verse two says, he who walks blamelessly and does righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Uh, that, that verse, verse two caught my eyes because um, this question of who's going to dwell with, with the most high. And it doesn't, it's not just a matter of just talking it. Um, like just with your lips, because yes, there is an aspect of professing with our lips, right? There, I mean, we, we profess, we, we had immersions, praise you, and there's a confession that comes with that verbally. Um, but then there are those who say with their lips, but it's truly not in their heart. And at the end of the day, that's, that's really what matters because we can be, you know, we've, we've met people that are narcissists. We've met people that, that seem as though they're, they're walking right. And truly they're actually wicked. Um, but he's looking for ones that speak truth in his own heart. And I think it, I just love the first Psalm um, and how Psalms open up with, with one that um, prospers and righteousness is the one that meditates on his word. And that's how we get it in our heart. That's how that, that, that develops um, as we meditate on him and, and such. So that verse two kind of just stuck out at me. I didn't know if I saw Shushana's hand. Sorry. I thought I saw a hand raised. Yeah, I got a cross-reference for verse 2. <clears throat> Isaiah 33, verse 15. He who walks righteously and speaks blamelessly, he who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing to take a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing, from hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from looking at evil. Wow. That's heavy stuff. Um, how deep can we go? <laughs> how righteous can we be? Um, what stuck out to me in here is is uh, speaks blamelessly. A person who has a great reputation walks righteously. Who despises the gain of oppression? So taking advantage of the poor. You know, you think of our, 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 our system today, our um, social security system and, and welfare system today is so corrupt. There's so many people making so much money off of that system. It's disgusting. Um, I, was a, I was a social worker for six years, eight years, no, six years in total, and I got to see a good amount of corruption money insurance <laughs> uh it's really what it's all about you don't get the help you really need people just want to see the money so they can give you stuff they do help some people but there's a lot of cracks in the system and there's people up the, up at the top making a lot of money off of it I just wanted to bring up a cross reference for 15 verse 4. It's um, Matthew, <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew 12 verse 49 to 50. And having stretched out his hand towards his taught ones, he said, "See my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the desire of my Father who is in the heavens is my brother and sister and mother." And I, I think that uh, it's no coincidence that we're coming to this again. Um, especially given the situation that you're going through, Laura, which uh, I believe all of us at one time or another have dealt with or are still going through. So um, and just and take comfort in, in the scriptures. And we all need to continue to lift each other up and remember that our family is not necessarily those who we are born to or of. And, you know, it's blood is not necessarily the ones that that are our true family our true mother father sisters and brothers so you know i think that's it's beautiful that this is something that we're seeing again today
All right, let's throw some Torah in here real quick. Uh, Cross-referencing off of verse 5. is Exodus chapter 22, verse 25. Exodus 22, 25. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor. You shall not charge him interest. Wow. That doesn't sound like a burden or bondage to me. Imagine if uh, the world practiced that. Exodus 22, 25. Leviticus 25, verse 35 to 37. If your brother has become poor and his hand can't support himself among you, wow, it happens. Then you shall uphold him. He shall live with you like an alien a.k.a. like a Gentile sojourner, somebody who's not a natural Israelite, and a temporary resident. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your Elohim, Yahuwah, that your brother may live among you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. Man, imagine if we can practice that. That doesn't sound like a amen. We do do it. We did it for eight days <laughs> here at the Muses. Right. <laughs> we've, been, we've been coming here a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and there, this is something that's come up many times for us within the past year. Um, and how incredible it's been to be able to share these times with one another because this is how it's supposed to be and those who call our call themselves our family who really aren't our true family they don't even know how to do these things for each other for us and and that's it's beautiful to be able to give freely and not to expect anything back and then to trust that others will understand that and to do such for one another it's wonderful Wonderful. One of the one of the best experiences of my life, I know, because I I know how desperately I've wanted to be able to give. And, you know, it's it's not about the receiving, it's about the giving. And that we can do that with each other. It's been it's wonderful. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a good topic. I'm gonna do some more cross references here. Deuter Deuteronomy 23, verse 19 to 20. You shall not lend on interest to your brother. Interest of money, interest of food, interest of anything that is lent on interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you shall not your brother interest. And I think this foreigner is one who is a temporary resident, not one who wants to stay. If it was a Gentile that wanted to stay in Israel, I think it would be different. Yeah. Because the other, the other verse was saying, let's see, Leviticus 25 was saying, he shall live with you like an alien and a temporary resident. Yeah, but I'm saying there's a distinction. And I remember a friend of mine told me this because he knows Hebrew and there's different types of goyim. There's one to stay and join covenant and the commandments and everything. And then there's those who are just passing by, you know, maybe they're traveling somewhere and they're coming by just to pass through and they need a place to stay. Deuteronomy 23. Mm-hmm. 23, verse 19 to 20. Yeah, that was the Leviticus 25, 35 to 37. Yep. I was just trying to point out there's a distinction of different types of foreigners. There's two different cat two different classes of foreigners. There's a visitor or a passerbyer, and then there's a one that wants to be a resident, wants to stay. Like Rahab. Mm-hmm. You guys want to get on the mic? Or you want me to talk? Because I don't want the recording to be like me pausing. 
So there, there's a verse I'm trying to find right now that I believe is in Ezekiel. It talks about don't let the foreigner or the eunuch say, um, separate me from Yahuwah's people. So there are foreigners that like join themselves to Israel. And then there's other foreigners like Darnell said that just they're on a journey and they just go through the land and they just stay for maybe a couple nights and then they're on their way. So I'm, I'm trying to find that exact verse if I can. Okay, uh, Sister Millie just said Isaiah 56, verse 3. Okay, let me go there real quick. 56, verse 3. All right. Let not the stranger, um, reading from the LXXE Septuagint, let not the stranger who attaches himself to Yahuwah say, Surely Yahuwah will separate me from his people. And let not the eunuchs say, I am a dry tree. Thus says Yahuwah to the eunuchs, as many as shall keep my Sabbaths and choose the things which I take pleasure in, not our pleasure, his pleasure, and take hold of my covenant, I will give to them in my house and within my walls an honorable place better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name and it shall not fail. And verse 6, And I will give it to the strangers that attach themselves to Yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of Yahuwah, to be to him servants and handmaids. And as for all that keep my Sabbaths, all means all, from profaning them and that take hold of my covenant oh boy might as well read the whole chapter and i will bring them to my set apart mountain and gladden them in my house of prayer their whole burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be acceptable acceptable upon my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations says yahuwah that gathers the dispersed of Yashrael, for I will gather to him a congregation. All you beasts of the field. Okay. All right. So, yeah. I'm trying to look for a scripture where it talks about treating the stranger as your brother numbers thank you let me look for it there definitely want to read this let's see forgive me guys for a small pause here i think this is a very important topic we always hit on this Every time we get a chance to, let me see, Leviticus 19.34 says, The stranger who lives as a foreigner with you shall be to you as a native born. Yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Shall be to you as a native born among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you lived as foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So that to me shows that there is a distinction. And I think this passage that I was going to read, Deuteronomy chapter 23, regarding money and interest, when it says charge the foreigner, I really want to believe that it's the foreigner who's not really joining himself with Israel. And I want to believe that the one who is joining himself with Israel is now put into the same category as not being charged interest because they're brothers. Yeah. Let me just finish Deuteronomy 23 and then I'll give it to you. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, 19, you shall not lend on interest to, to your brother, interest of money, interest of food, interest of anything that is lent on interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you shall not your brother's interest that Yahuwah your Elohim may bless you in all that you put your hand to in the land where you go into possess. 
Okay, I wanted to look up some verses about this kind of brought back up. There's one law between the native born and the sojourner. So the first one that came up when I searched online was Leviticus chapter 24, verse 22. There shall be one law for the stranger and the native, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And let's see, I think I got a couple more. Exodus 12, verse 49. So we're going to go there. Exodus 12, verse 49. There shall be one law to the native and to the sojourner coming among you. And also, I got a couple cross-references from this verse. Numbers chapter 9. Verse 14, and if there should come to you a stranger in your land and should keep the Passover to Yahuwah, he shall keep it according to the law of the Passover and according to its ordinance, there shall be one law for you, both for the stranger and for the native of the land. Numbers 15, verse, chapter 15, verse 15, there shall be one law for you and for the strangers abiding among you, a perpetual law for your generations as you are so shall the stranger be before yahuwah excellent doug all right so that's a little bit there on on walking righteously who laura did you want to say something laura go ahead you're unmuted I have a question regarding that. Um, some people honor the Sabbath on the new moon, and some people honor the Sabbath on the Friday night and Saturday night. So in the one law to the stranger, how does that work? Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, we know what you're asking. We're having a discussion over here because this is a this is a topic that requires a lot of time. Uh, but do you want to say something short, Bobby? Yes, th th this topic is very touchy for most people, and from what I noticed, there are people that hold it at the new moon. There are people that hold it on Thursdays. There are people that hold it on Saturdays. We were Saturday Sabbath holders. We all believe in that over here. But uh, there's a verse in Paul that says, the Paul, is it Acts? I think, I'm not sure. Colossians, he talks about do not, yeah, yeah, do not let anyone judge you according to the Sabbath day or the feast. And I think, I think when they were, when they were putting that scripture in there, they knew, I think they could foretell that there was going to be a lot of confusion. And as long as people are keeping the Sabbath, this is my point of view, as long as they are keeping a Sabbath and in, in the walk, you know, Nobody really knows what day is what. There's so much confusion and mixed up in this world. The only the only problem I have with it is that are most people are very judgmental towards what Sabbath people hold, you know, and that's my biggest issue. I wish that people could come together and just appreciate that people are holding the Sabbath, not knowing exactly which day it is, you know. Well said. Uh, go ahead, Brother d -Rail. Let me unmute you. No, I just wanted, uh, Bobby, what the chapter verse was that that you recorded? Colossians 2, 14, I believe. Colossians 2, 14, all right, thank you. Four, 14 to 16, just read 14 to 16. Yeah. That is all. All right. Yeah, and I think that's that's, you know, we'll leave it at that. Laura, we could definitely talk about this more um, off record. I don't know if we did a video yet or planning on it. We we'll probably will do a video on it, but we've we've debunked this whole Sabbath on different day thing uh, several times. There's been people that came in our group that had that belief, and it was fine. But and we still welcome them to come and fellowship with us. But it's 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 interesting how they just stop stop coming, and it's like. Whether you start Sabbath fr Saturday morning or Friday night, shouldn't 
stop you from me, uh, fellowshipping on Saturday afternoon because <laughs> it's all the same time. Uh, but then you have people celebrating Sabbaths during Wednesday and Tuesday, and it jumps all around the week. And honestly, it doesn't seem realistic to us, um, you know, to keep a job and to try to have a random jumping around Sabbath. But anyway, we can talk about that some other time. It's a big topic. Um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to stop the recording here. I think we're due for a break. So I will end the recording here. And what chapter was that? Psalms 15. Thank you.